building walls around Asgard. One day, Odin decided to build a wall. It happens even to the best of us. He said to the Aesir, his people, I will build a great wall, and I will make the Jotuns pay for it. And you will be surprised to know, he succeeded. Odin wanted a wall around Asgard, a fortification to protect it from its enemies. Asgard had been well protected in the past, but the long war with the Vanir had destroyed most of it. Now, the Vanir and the Aesir were at peace, but there were still Jotuns and other monsters out there, so Asgard needed new defences. Just a brief here, Jotuns, or Jotnar, are another people of the Nine Worlds who live, surprise surprise, in Jotunheim. Now, Jotun is usually translated giant, but there doesn't seem to be a big size issue between the Jotuns and the Aesir. I mean, technically Loki is a Jotun, but at one point Thor puts him in his pocket to cross a riverbed, so obviously Loki can't be that massive. Maybe it's better to understand Jotun in the sense ogre. Another good word is etin or eoten, an old English word which basically means the devourer. Now I've told you all this, I'll sometimes translate Jotun as giant and make comments about their size, which is completely inaccurate, but now at least you know it's inaccurate and you can brag about it. Let's get back to building walls to keep the Jotuns out and getting them to do the dirty job. First, Odin needed to find the perfect builder. To do this, he promised the builders anything they wanted. And sure enough, a man came by and said he would build the wall. He was a strong, sturdy man, taller than most of the Aesir. I can build something that will protect you from the giants, said the builder. You're not a giant yourself, are you? asked Odin. Nah, <sighs> said the builder. Nah, of course not. Odin looked at the tall, tough, burly builder and thought, ah, what the heck, at least he'll get my wall done for me. So he asked the not giant what he wanted in payment for his work. It turned out he wanted the sun, the moon, and Freya. For such prizes, he could build the wall in two winters. Now, the sun and the moon weren't too much of an issue because you can't see them that well from Asgard anyway, and who cares about the view from Midgard? No one important lives there, only humans. But Freya, hmm. Freya was the goddess of beauty and lust. So you know what the builder wanted her for. As you could expect, she wasn't too chuffed about all this. Now, Freya was a beautiful young woman, but she was also a Vanir. Odin tried to argue that it was her people's fault if they needed a wall in the first place. And it would be a small sacrifice, think of the greater good, he might not be that bad a husband, he, he had nice eyes. Freya was having none of it. But then Odin wasn't easily discouraged. He said to the builder, look, if you can build the wall in one winter and with no help whatsoever, then we'll give you what you ask for. Allfather was confident the builder wouldn't be able to do the ramparts in so little time and fought half of an unpaid wall was nearly as good as a complete one, which just tells you what a terrible business partner he was. Maybe he could get another idiot to build the other half and not pay him either. The worker, surprisingly, accepted this deal, at one condition. He said he needed his horse. Odin hesitated. He didn't want to risk Freya after all. She would make such a scene. And this builder seemed quite confident. Now, Odin had Loki as an advisor at the time, which proves we can all make mistakes. Loki said, Ah, don't be like that, let him have his horse. What harm can it do? Loki was going to seriously regret saying this, by the way. Now, the not-giant was rather worried about Thor, well known for killing Jotuns, and come to that he was also worried about Odin, well known for tricking Jotuns. So, he made the gods swear two things. One, that he would not be harmed as long as he was in Asgard, and two, that he would be paid if he finished the wall. Odin swore on Draupnir, his ring. Draupnir means the dripper. This magical ring pops out eight other identical rings every ninth night. Or they drip out of it or something? Anyway, it's an important item to swear upon, and it reassured the builder, who started working on the wall. It quickly became obvious that he was able to build a wall in one winter. He was fast working, powerful, and more than anything else, he had an awesome horse. The horse did everything. The builder would go about singing, look at my horse, my horse is amazing. And he was right. It worked so fast. Three days before winter would be upon the gods, the wall was nearly finished and only the gates needed to be done. Now, Freya was throwing the worst tantrum in her life. 
And Odin was rather upset, and his wife Frigg was nagging him about how she quite liked the sun after all, and it was such a shame to lose it, and what was the point of ramparts if you couldn't walk along them in the moonlight, etc, etc. So Odin turned to Loki and said, it's all your fault. You're the boss, boss, said Loki. I only give advice. Well, the boss will cut off your head if you don't find a solution, said Odin. He knew Loki worked best under pressure. And Loki, who to be fair was now very motivated to find a solution, promised he would stop the builder from finishing the wall. The next day, as the builder was setting off, well, to finish the wall, his horse suddenly stopped. He lifted his head and sniffed the air. The horse was called Svadilfari, which means the unlucky traveller, or he who does a difficult voyage. The horse was way too amazing to have had a tough life, so why it was called this we will never know. Svadilfari had stopped because he'd spotted a mare. The mare was doing the human equivalent of beating her eyelashes and rolling her hips and sighing while she stared at the sky. Now horses, even amazing ones, don't really think about things that much, and horny stallions don't think about anything at all, so Svadilfari just went straight for her. The mare galloped away, and he galloped after her, and there was nothing in the world his owner could do to hold him back. On the other hand, you have to give it to Svadilfari. She was one hot mare. Without his horse, the builder couldn't finish the wall in time. After three days of useless work, and with only a few stones missing, he had to stop. Well, said Odin, thanks for everything. Such a shame you didn't get to finish it. Maybe next time. Always a pleasure working with you. I hope you find your horse again. See ya. You cheated, said the nut giant. You stole my horse. Sorry, was there anything in the deal about not cheating? You should learn to read the small print, mate. The builder was so furious, he suddenly revealed himself to be a Jotun. The ogre's rage swept over him, and he swore he would break Asgard to pieces and grind the wall to dust. Thor, said Odin. Odin didn't like dirtying his hands. And Thor, the renowned giant killer, killed the builder with one blow to the head. So the two promises the gods had made to the builder, one keep him safe and two pay him, were both broken. But at least they had a wall, and the sun and the moon, and Freya. I wonder what happened to Loki, mused Frigg. Well, it took a few months, but Loki came back, leading a small grey foal he was much too proud of. When the foal whinnied, Loki would answer, Who is my beautiful baby? It was all rather embarrassing, so everyone pretended they didn't notice. The foal grew into a lovely horse with eight legs. Well, to be fair, he did have an amazing dad, and a pretty weird mum. He was called Sleipnir, which means he who slides or who glides, because he glided through the air faster than any beast. Loki, like all mums everywhere, wanted only the best for his son, and so when Odin offered him a place at court, as the royal riding horse, Loki said yes. And that is how Odin got not only his wool, but also his horse Sleipnir. And all of that without paying anyone anything, and without having to kill any giants himself. Odin wasn't king of the gods for nothing. Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed episode 1 of A Winter Night in Iceland. If you liked it, you can subscribe or check out the Facebook page. For the moment, I'm aiming to get an episode out every fortnight. Oh, and if you've got any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments, I'd be happy to answer. Cheers!